I'm joined by Russian opposition activist Vladimir Karamurza. Karamurza is the vice chairman of Open Russia and says his criticism of Vladimir Putin led to two poisoning attempts in two years. Thank you so much for being here. Do you, you hear the way that both sides are talking about it, a low level of trust. Uh, we may be at an all-time low in this relationship. Where do you see the U.S.-Russia relationship right now? Well, of course, there's nothing particularly new about this. Every one of the last three U.S. administrations have begun by declaring some form of recent or improvement in relations with Vladimir Putin's regime and of course it hasn't ended so well for the previous two but I think uh, the terminology is important even in your question there what do you consider to be relations between US and Russia well Russia is not confined just to Vladimir Putin's regime Russia is much more varied much bigger there are many different opinions in Russian society of course and and of course uh, it's also important to underscore that Vladimir Putin's regime is not democratically elected and we are you know living in the 21st century I think the only acceptable legitimacy for a government should be so you're suggesting that the, that the Russian people may have a much fonder uh, view of the American people than the people who run the country. Well, I think it's important, and it's also important for this new U.S. administration to send a signal uh, that they're willing to engage in a dialogue with Russia and not just with Vladimir Putin's Kremlin. And there's been a lot of talk today about whether or not the meeting with uh, Mr. Putin will happen for Secretary Tillerson, and it has in the end. But it was another meeting that didn't happen in Moscow, and uh, I would say that this is very regrettable. Last week, um, several uh, members of the U.S. Senate, both sides, Republicans and Democrats, including uh, there was a letter signed by every single member of the Senate Appropriation Subcommittee with responsibility for the State Department, urging Mr. Tillerson to find time while he's in Moscow to meet with representatives of Russian civil society. This has been a long tradition, bipartisan tradition of uh, U.S. Secretaries of State in the past. Unfortunately, uh, he hasn't found time for this meeting. Uh, this is the first official visit of Mr. Tillerson as Secretary of State to Moscow, so many people were watching for the signals. I certainly hope that's not a deliberate signal, uh, but nevertheless the meeting didn't But do you happen. think it will be taken that way? It remains to be seen. I mean, of course, this, this trip has been completely overshadowed by the events in Syria, the, the chemical attack, and of course, Mr. Putin's regime coming to the defense of its uh, all Syrian ally, uh, Mr. Assad, and so on and so forth. So, of course, there'll be explanations that, you know, physically no time and, and, you know, something to that extent. But I think it is a very important signal uh, that, in my view, uh, I'm an outsider here, I'm a Russian citizen, that's not for me to say anything to the U.S. administration, but I would say it's very important for us as as uh, citizens of Russia to see that the U.S. and the U.S. administration is willing to engage in dialogue uh, with Russian society as well as with Vladimir Putin's regime. Uh, and um, uh, if uh, the U.S. administration really wants to build a long-term relationship with Russia based on trust, as, as you know, we just heard uh, in, in those remarks a few minutes ago, that I think the only relationship that is based on trust can be a relationship between the United States and Russia as a whole, with Russian society, in, uh, not just with Mr. Putin's regime. And I think there should be more contacts and more dialogue and more engagement between the leaders of Western democracies, including the United States, and Russian civil society groups, Russian democratic organizations. A lot of that leadership here in Congress on Capitol Hill has decided they need to, to these investigations and I want to play for you what uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov said about Russian interference in the U.S. election. We have not seen any facts, even hints at facts. We have not seen any evidence. We do understand that there are many people who want to undermine our relations. These are just games. He said Russia will respond when they get proof. What do you take away, if anything, from what Lavrov had to say? Well, of course, Mr. Lavrov and his officials have denied many things before. I know they've always denied, for instance, interfering in the, in the Ukrainian elections, elections in other countries of the so-called post-Soviet space, former Soviet republics. And, of course, we know that the Putin regime has interfered in those elections. And, frankly, it shouldn't be surprising that they decided to up the scale and, and try to interfere in the U.S. electoral process. Why not? Why not go for the gold? Uh, and because the U.S. has basically become, uh, because Russia, forgive me, has basically become a domestic political issue here in the United States, or it seems that way in the last few months, many people are beginning to pay attention to what's actually happening in Russia, to what has been happening for years, to with what, uh, you know, uh, we have lived in Russia for, for years and have begun discovering that uh, Vladimir Putin's regime is not a democratic one, that it's, uh, you know, the Russian people today have no opportunity to freely elect or freely criticize their leaders, uh, that the Kremlin has been interfering in elections for many years, first of all with elections in Russia, 
because we haven't had a free and democratic election in our own country for 17 years now. And this is, don't take my word for it, just look at the reports from OSCE observers for the old past national elections in Russia after 2000. Uh, and there have been cases of interference uh, by Mr. Putin's regime in elections in other countries for a long time now. And frankly, it doesn't come as a surprise uh, that it uh, tried to interfere in US elections. And generally, I think it's, uh, it's been a long-standing uh, feature of Russian history, certainly modern Russian history, uh, that domestic repression and aggressive behavior abroad and foreign policy go hand in hand. And you and say there were two poisoning attempts on you, and yet you'll go back. Uh, I am definitely planning to go back. Yes, the, uh, uh, the the latest poisoning attempt was just a couple of months ago in February, so I'm still uh, well, still recovering from that. And last time after the first poisoning in 2015, it took me more than a year, so I'm expecting this not to be a quick process again. But yes, I do want to go back because I think that the work we do, the work of the democratic opposition in Russia is important, and I think we have to continue because there are many, many people in Russia who reject Mr. Putin's regime, who reject its authoritarianism, its corruption, its aggressive stance towards the outside world and who want to see Russia become a normal, modern, democratic European country. There are many, many people in our country like that, and I think it's important that we continue our work in this direction.